The smoking mirror will express things as they are. At 13, you will start hating your body. It will be perfectly normal, horrible, and spontaneous. Fortunately, you will have your first cigarette on the cracked calcium carbonate of your bathroom floor, a camel that promises to never get on your nerves. At 17, you will date a much older man to whom you will lose your virginity. It will sting, then pound, like a symbol falling on your foot forever. When you complain, he will say, I've been trying to find a nectarine in this town for approximately 290 hours. There will be boys your age you want to kiss. When you are 19, E.E. E. Cummings will die. Let's live suddenly without thinking. You will switch to Territons because... Because... You will be hungry for flavor. At 23, you will wear rings on all your fingers and sing about mothers forced out of their villages. In quiet protestation, you will remove your top at Howard Johnson's, then order red jello with whipped cream and a cherry. When you are 28, Neil Armstrong will land on the moon and you will have a mystical experience while taking a perfectly elliptical shit. <laughs> at 30, you will get married. Finally, your mother will say, yeah, yeah, yeah. You will adore, despise her. He will be a madman, which you will learn too late means Madison Avenue, not madcap, irreverent, witty, or thrilling. Together you will sip coffee in orange and pink cups and go to Est, where it will be confirmed your body is disgusting. <laughs> you are your body, and you should be grateful. At 35, your husband will have affairs with girls named Debbie, Dawn, and Sunshine. You will sit Indian style on your marriage bed and memorize lines from Sylvia Plath. I am not cruel, only truthful. At 36, you will have a daughter and name her Debbie, Dawn, or Sunshine. You will learn from her creamy skin, shiny eyes, and impossibly glossy hair, which just smells so good. You will fret and wonder why your hair doesn't smell so good. As payback, you will constantly send her to her room where she will brood and smoke teratins, the taste worth fighting for. At 43, your husband will leave you for a tidy blonde of 22. You will go to singles bars and wear hot pants and smoke cools because... 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 There's only one way to play it. Rapidly, your skin will become craggy and people will call you ma'am. This will sound like they're reprimanding you, but only because they are. At 50, you will consult with a therapist who will inform you that your crucial authenticity is existential and you do not really exist. Not really. This will not be the advice you were hoping for, so you will get cats. They will know you are authentic. Your place will stink of authenticity. Your daughter will visit with her much older husband. She will no longer be glossy and have developed cellulite. You will decide you love her. She will despise, adore you. While her hubby makes a grab for you, you will be giddy with delight. Who wouldn't be? You still have it. Nevertheless, you will scold him. How dare you? Later on the ruptured mollusk scallops and flinty corals of your bathroom floor, you will give him your body. At 58, you will be diagnosed with invasive ductal carcinoma and have your breast lopped off. Being flat-chested is wildly exhilarating, like being a kid again. At 67, you'll buy a little condo in Queens with the money you'll get from half your husband's pension. Finally, your mother will yup, 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 yup. <laughs> you will look down and see she is falling apart. You will feel responsible. At 75, you'll experience heaviness at the center of your chest. This will last for more than a few minutes. You will ignore it, although you've broken out in a cold sweat, and feel lightheaded, like being drunk on a snowy day. At 86, your abnormal cells will divide uncontrollably and you will join the Hemlock Society where you will meet many kind, interesting, dying people. Bed-bound and sedated and on truckloads of barbiturates, you will reread old favorites. Bertha, the mad woman in the attic, finally offs herself and Rochester, now blonde and with one hand, is free to marry Jane. Later, you will recuperate what you will find unfair and unreasonable. Dorothy, on the other hand, will marry handsome Ladislaw that took you long enough, silly twit, you will say, and really mean it. Your hospice caretaker will think you are talking about her as she feeds you those last blasted handfuls of secobarbital. You'll be grateful, grateful, so very grateful. Thank you. Wow.